Yo, so y'all know the drill at this point. Let's see who we can piss off today by simply talking about the most well-respected tier list in the Honkai and Star Rail community, at least on the EN side of things, right? We're here again at Pridewind.gg taking a look at their tier list for July 2024, which just so happens to be part one of patch 2.4. We're here mainly because Yun Lee has been added to the game as well as March 8th, otherwise known as the Hunt Path version of March 7th. There's also been some other big changes here as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of this stuff here. And I wanted to point out first and foremost, of course, so that's what most people are probably here for. Yun Lee is here sitting at tier one, which is pretty darn good considering there wasn't even a tier 0.5, you know, before it used to just be S tier and then A tier. So she would have been the equivalent of an A tier before just below S tier. Um, so I just wanted to point that out, especially when characters like Jing Liu and Dan Hung and Vibrator Lune recently getting bumped down since the last time we were here taking a look at this list. And just so that you guys are aware, these aren't numbered off 1, 2, 3 or something like that, or 1, 2, 3, 4 down here like you see. They're just in the same tier. There's, they're alphabetically ordered. That's why you see them like right here. Yun Li is Y at the end of the alphabet. Dan is at the beginning of the alphabet, etc., etc. They're they're not numbered off. So one character on this tier could be better than the other. As you might imagine, they're not numbered off, just so that you guys are aware. And you see that Yun Li is sitting above Clara here, and they're both basically the same character with a slight twist. They're even the same damage type being physical. Just one is a 1.0 character, and Yun Li is a 2.4 character, kind of like the Clara 2.0, if you will. She just doesn't have a stand, aka she doesn't have Zvarog. She just has a really big, thick sword that she slaps people around with. Anyways, she is a really, really solid character. I want to point that out. I will be putting out a video comparing Clara and Yun Li together. I'm going to put literally the same relics on both of them and put them in the exact same scenario in the exact same environment and just let them fly and see what happens to compare how well they perform. I imagine sometimes one might perform better than the other given the right circumstances. They're probably not necessarily neck and neck, but pretty close to each other in terms of their damage output. And of course, Clara being a 1.0 character, you're probably going to get several copies of her. And depending on how, how high of Eidolons you have for her, she could end up being more powerful than Yun Li given the right buffs from the Eidolons you get. So keep that in mind. Your Clara might be better than your Yun Li. I've pointed this out several times before she came out that if you already have a really powerful Clara, you don't really need Yun Li. But, you know, she's fun, yada yada, you get the picture. So, March 7th over here. She's also in tier one, but she's a bit of a jack of all trades. So she's not a main DPS character, as you can see here. She's known as a specialist, kind of like a hybrid style character. Uh, she does a whole bunch of different stuff, right? She's a breaker. She has buffs. She sits somewhere between kind of like a damage dealer and like a buffer. So she's basically like a sub dps style character she's very sp friendly she has follow-ups as well she does so many different things and it kind of shows us that because she's doing so much and because she's one of the first characters coming out in like the low fu part two kind of like story that she's probably going to end up getting some more characters that synergize with her well she probably doesn't have all the teammates that she wants to make her truly incredibly powerful like we see with Dr. Ratio, for example. On his release, he was incredibly strong, then he dipped down just a little bit until he ended up getting more characters that worked well with him. Obviously, Topaz is still his best pairing, but then we ended up getting Robin in the game, which raised the power level of all follow-up characters because she's literally the centric follow-up support. And then, of course, we ended up getting Aventurine. Obviously, these two didn't release in that order, but we got Aventurine as well after Ratio released. And Ratio is literally the centric sustain for follow-up characters. And so, basically, you got the follow-up dream team out here now. And when you have the follow-up dream team and all of these other follow-up characters that synergize with each other, we see a character like Ratio bump all the way up to tier 0 0.5, which, yes, he's an imaginary character, higher than Dan Hung and Bibiter Lune on this list. I've been telling people for a long time now, many months, that the meta is changing and the meta is favoring follow-up synergy and break synergy right now. So these crit-based characters 
aren't hitting as hard as they were before. Obviously, follow-up characters still want to crit and whatnot, but you see what I'm saying? The traditional characters that we were using in 1.0 aren't being favored in the current meta right now. So you're seeing somebody like Ratio actually, who, by the way, who came out and he was free for players when he released, is performing better than Dan Hung and Bibiter Lune in the current memory of chaos with the right teams, etc., etc., right? Given the right circumstances, Ratio can actually perform better than Dan Hung and Bibiter Lune. Your Dan might be super highly invested and might perform better than your Ratio, who might not be as highly invested, or you might not have literally Ratio, Topaz, Robin, Aventurine. I get it. It's a big investment to get like the full Exodia, right, of the perfect follow-up dream team, and then hyper-invest into all four of those characters super highly. I get it. It's not as easy as having like, you know, uh, Dan Hung and Bibiter Lune, and then Ting Yoon, who came out in 1.0, and everybody has a good Ting Yoon by this point, right? Unless you're brand new to the game, and all you really needed to slap on there was Sparkle or something like that, and just any other good sustain, and there you go, he's performing really well. It's easier to make him work really, really well, but given the right circumstances, Ratio is incredibly powerful. I've been saying it since he came out. Like, it's weird to me that he came out as such a powerful character, and that he wasn't literally the best character when he came out, right? But he was incredibly powerful. And some people were, if you can believe this, that like he's been underrated to a degree, despite the fact that he keeps performing well and he keeps getting synergy that makes him really, really strong. And, you know, I'm glad to see that Pridewin has noticed this and actually bumped him up higher than Jing Liu and Dan. And it's just, it's just not the Jing Liu and Dan era right now. They'll probably have their time in the sun again, Hopefully, we'll just have to see, but I've been talking about this for a long time, that some of these 1.0 block characters just aren't as powerful as they used to be. There's some things in Jing Liu's kit that hold her back, like that one problem with her buff falling off. Like, depending on the wave that you're on, you usually would be able to, like, hit her ultimate again once you get it after defeating an enemy, and it could fall off. Even if you spam, there are some there are some waves where you don't get to activate her ult. It's just, it's predetermined in a way. And so that's unfortunate, and that's something that holds her back. It's weird that, like, it was one of her strengths strengths at the start but i knew as the meta developed that that one thing could hold her back it's a hard stop that she can't get around that sometimes her buff falls off and when her buff falls off so does her damage unfortunate for her um and so we'll hopefully see these two rise up again but we'll just have to wait and see what happens with them so uh let's go ahead and keep moving along here because we have himiko who's getting the bump up because She's not exactly, a, she is kind of like a jack of all trades, right? She, believe it or not, people forget she has DOTs. She's not known as a DOT character. I wouldn't necessarily run her on a DOT team, but she has burn DOTs that she applies to enemies. She has follow-up attacks that she uses. She has breaks, like her kit works around follow-ups and breaks mostly. She does a bunch of different stuff. And right now, what's the meta? The meta is follow-up attacks and breaks. That's the, that's the currently favored meta right now. Obviously, you have Acheron who just breaks all the rules and does whatever the hell she wants, and she's still the best or whatever, right? She still does so, so, so much. Obviously, you have, like, in the current meta, because breaks are so heavily favored, you have Firefly that's going to perform better than Acheron in certain environments. But you get my point. It doesn't matter what the meta is. Acheron is still just going to be good no matter what, right? But... You see a character like Himiko, when the meta is favoring her, she gets bumped up from like a lower tier up to a higher tier. Sitting next to a character like Blade, right? Blade is a premium five-star character that people still to this day love and adore, despite the fact that he's not as strong as he was on release. And so the fact that she gets bumped up to sit next to this guy, and he has a follow-up attack too, is crazy. Like, I love to see it. You love to see it. She works on break teams or follow-up teams. I love to see a character like Himiko getting more time in the sunlight, right? Super duper cool. Avenge, or sorry, Argenti, uh, maybe we'll see him bump up eventually. It's just not his time to shine right now. Bro's on the bench currently, right? Serval's also an incredibly powerful character. Maybe we'll see her get bumped up again if things start to favor her more. Uh, we see, as we can see right here, we see Gwenaifen bumping up a little bit uh, because we saw uh, Luca bump up a little bit before because he was always a good break character. So when the break meta started developing really, really well, um, it start we started to see him get bumped up. Gwenaifen is kind of a, 
She's more of a DOT based character. She does have some debuffs, but in the currently available memory of chaos that's available right now, she can perform very well. And so that's why she's getting the bump up. It's not super duper synergy based necessarily that she's getting bumped up. It just happens to favor her right now. We see the same thing with Asta. She can work well on a break team. She's a good solid buffer, but the, the current memory of chaos just favors her a little bit more than let's say the last memory of chaos. So she gets a little bit of a bump up, which is nice to see. We love to see Asta uh, performing well because like for example if you're running a dot team like kafka and black swan and you need to use your ron may on your other team for example like if you're if one of your team really really needs to use ron may and you're trying to run ron may on your black swan and kafka team on the other side but you can't because you just need ron may on the other team you can slot in asta and still perform pretty much just as well asta is super underrated on DOT teams. Remember, she used to be the DOT support before Ron May came out. Don't forget about that, guys. So just something to keep in mind there. She will always have value in this game until we get more supports for DOT, right? Ron May is the best right now for DOT. Then we have Asta. And then after that, there's pretty much nobody else. So she will always be relevant as far as long as we don't because <laughs> I don't know what the heck happened, man. They gave us so much stuff for DOT, and they just haven't given DOT anything since uh, Black Swan came out. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll get some more DOT characters soon, and we'll see these two rise up a bit here. And let's talk about Boot Hill. Boot Hill came out slamming, right? He came out slamming, but he hasn't really like performed. But when you have a character, I guess, like Firefly out right now, unfortunately for him, he's just not as good as Firefly, right? He came out cooking, right? But when you have Firefly out there too, it's just unfortunate for the guy. She's just going to do better. She's going to sit up here a little bit higher than he is, right? And so as far as the sustainability slot goes, we haven't seen any changes besides Lynx. And Lynx is getting a bump up because she's able to uh, to to buff up a character like Yun Lee. Not directly. What she does is she can apply her skill to a character like Clara or a character like Yun Lee, right? And she can make, she can give them a little bit more aggro value. And Yun Lee and Clara both want to get hit a lot, okay? That is their thing. They are counter-based characters. I try to tell people not to think of Yun Lee as a follow-up character. Yes, she is a follow-up character, but try to think of her as a counter character. Try to think of Clara as a counter character, because if you just think follow-up, you're going to have a bad time. You need to remember that they need to be hit in order for them to actually make their follow-ups happen. That's really important and people need to remember that. In fact, some people put Clara and Yun Lee with a Ron May just because the buffs are so good. But if the enemies are physical weak, bro, she's going to delay the enemy's action and they won't attack them anymore all of a sudden. Ron May is only good on Yun Lee and Clara teams if the enemy is not physical weak because they need to be attacked ron may actively stops the enemy from being able to attack them just something to think about you want them to get hit so a character like uh links over here that can raise their aggro value is incredibly strong in the force uh the four star slot i still think that it's it would be better to use somebody like huo huo who can literally just give them energy and the energy and the attack buff is better than something like Lynx could provide. But there are certain environments where Lynx could perform very, very well. So definitely, definitely something to keep in mind there. And another thing about Yun Lee that needs to be mentioned here is that these characters, these five stars, are never given in Pride Wins calculations. They're never given their signature light cone, ever. So keep that in mind. They are always at E0 and they don't have their signature light cone. And Clara's, or sorry, uh, Yoon Lee's signature light cone is the only light cone that she could possibly use that gives her a higher aggro value. So when she has her signature light cone, she's OP as fuck, okay? She is super duper strong. Without that light cone though, you don't get the same multipliers, right? You don't get the same buffs. You don't get as much, right? You could use on the fall of an Aeon or like another four star option and it'll she'll still be really good but she the difference between her signature light cone and not is 
pretty darn big, right? It's pretty noticeable because now you're at the mercy of RNG because having the higher taunt value means that she's going to get hit more. She's going to get more follow-ups. She's going to get more actions. She's going to deal more damage. When you don't have her signature, you just don't have that. It's less likely that she'll get hit. And then you're going to have to rely on like the enemy hitting her. Then you can't run somebody like Ron May. Then you probably want to run somebody like maybe Lynx or like somebody like that that can give her more taunt value because if she doesn't have that, then her damage does fall off. I think she would straight up go up like a full ass tier uh, if she had her signature light cone on her. But th the same could be said for a lot of these other characters. If they had their signature light cone, they could be doing even better, right? So obviously that's why they don't give signatures because it's a little it's just unfair right some signatures are better than others so they they rate their characters based on uh like the neutral like five stars that you can get from the herda shop things like that now let's go ahead and see if we have any other changes to this list we see sampo getting bumped down because he's just he's just not like the he's he doesn't have the juice right now you know what i mean he doesn't have the juice if somebody else like if we get more dot centric like enemies or do if the if the meta favors dot a little bit more obviously we'll see him bump up but if we wanted to bump up guanifin and you need to kind of bump him down because that you need a little bit of room up here for him right if the meta is favoring her over him makes sense to switch these characters out so that's what we got we got guanifin going up we got sampa going down we have young king over here the young king getting bumped down to tier five again bro poor guy man poor guy this dude's on arland tier right now he's on arland tier that's rough bro that's painful the best thing about arland is his dog you know what i mean <laughs> that is so bad young king over here poor guy getting bumped down he will we'll probably see him rise up again as we usually do he flutters around down here depending on what's happening in the meta poor guy though just just he just has a he's he's got it rough man at least blade and dan and all these other characters aren't beating his ass today that's the best thing going on for him but that's pretty much all we got going on for memory of chaos but let's take a quick peek over at apocalyptic shadow real quick I wanted to point this out because I usually just cover Memory of Chaos for this video so that it doesn't last like 45 minutes or something like that, right? But I wanted to point out that March 7th is at E3, bro, at Eidolon 3, okay? And she is at tier 0 0.5 for Apocalyptic Shadow. What the heck, bro? She doesn't even have all of her Eidolons. That is crazy brother that is nuts i can't wait to see what happens once we get the rest of her eidolons to see how well she performs she might be the best performing uh like four star character in the entire game when that happens which would be nuts okay the best four stars right now are march 7th gallagher of course our beauty ting yun and pela and then of course shui yi is also a pretty solid breaker right now uh, those are the best four stars in the game, but she might be the best value uh, when she finally gets all of her Eidolons, which is nuts. She's already at tier 0.5. I mean, what the hell? Anyways, if you guys like this stuff, consider leaving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.